This video will help explain the process for using ST devices with ISPU, the Intelligent Sensor Processing Unit, and leverage the STMEMS ecosystem of tools and libraries. In this tutorial, we will be expanding on the previous videos and covering the Algo Builder tool and how to utilize it to quickly make a visualization for your ISPU output. The first step will be downloading the Algo Builder design application from the ST website. Search for Algo Builder and choose the development tool. After that, scroll down to the Git software section of the page. From here, download the ST MEMS Algo Builder and accept the agreement to start your download. Now that we have Algo Builder installed, I will guide you through the process of setting up your Algo Builder application for the first time. Once you have launched your Algo Builder application, your screen should look like the one shown. First, we will go to File, then Application Settings, and finally browse the executable locations for Uniqlo GUI and STM32 Cube IDE, which you used and installed in the previous videos. This will allow you to build designs, generate the C code, build the firmware, program your target hardware, and finally launch the Uniqlo GUI all from Algo Builder. We will then select our toolchain slash IDE as STM32 Cube IDE and then choose our target as the Nucleo F401 with the X Nucleo IKS 01A3 shield and the LSM 6 DSO 16 IS. I'm going to make an ISPU demo folder and a firmware folder inside that one. Next, I will hit Control S to save our design, and I'll navigate to the ISPU demo folder we just set up and save our design to that location. Algo Builder uses predefined code blocks to quickly allow you to implement proof of concept projects without the need to write code. You can drag and drop blocks from the library shown on the left. For this project, we will be using the ISPU block from the Sensor Hub folder. We can drag the ISPU block to the design area. Most of the blocks will have properties you can edit. For the ISPU block, it allows us to load a UCF file similar to how we loaded a UCF file into the data log extender application in the previous video. We will navigate to where we downloaded the Xcube ISPU package. Then from there to the ISPU folder. And then finally, from the ISPU folder to the SensorFusion 6X output folder to find the pre-generated UCF file included in the Xcube ISPU package. Once you have loaded, the UCF, you can once again click on the ISPU block. As you can see, the ISPU block has gained outputs based on the JSON file included in the output folder where the UCF was located. You can then view the ISPU block's description, which will now show the outputs gained from this JSON file. We can verify this by navigating to the Xcube ISP package folder in our file explorer. From there, once again, navigate to the ISPU folder, then the SensorFusion 6X folder, and finally the output folder, where we can open the JSON file and compare. 
While we are navigating the Xcube ISP package, we can take this time to look up the sensor settings this project was built with. By navigating back one folder to the Sensor Fusion 6X folder, we can now click on the ISPU folder instead of the output. This takes us to the project files for the Sensor Fusion 6X. In this folder, there is a configuration text file. This will show us the ODR and the full scale of the accelerometer and gyroscope. We can use this information to edit our sensor hub block in AlgoBuilder to match the value shown. In this case, a data rate of 104, the accelerometer full scale of 8G, and the gyroscope full scale of 2K DPS. Now we need a way to visualize our ISPU output. To do this, we will be using the fusion block found in the display folder of the block library. Drag the fusion block into the design area. In the fusion properties, you can see a drop down for the model name. We will be using the head model for this demo, but you can use whatever you like most. As you can see, the fusion block only takes a single input of four floats. Our ISPU block is outputting the four quaternos as separate floats. To solve this, we will need to use a MUX to configure the ISPU output into the correct input for the fusion display. We can search for the MUX using the filter in the library, and from there, choose the MUX float block. As you can see, the MUX float block is currently only accepting three inputs. In the settings for the MUX float, you need to change the number from three to four. Having done this, you can now connect everything. The sensor hub to the ISPU, each output of the ISP block to the MUX, and finally the MUX to the Fusion. At this point, you can save your design by pressing Control S. After saving, you can now generate the C code by pressing on the button the top bar labeled Generate C Code. Once the code has been properly generated, you can then build the firmware by pressing the button to its right. Don't worry if it takes a few moments, that's normal. During this time, you can make sure that your hardware is properly connected to your computer via USB. You can now use the button labeled Program Target to program the firmware to your Nucleo. After that has completed, we can now launch the Uniqlo GUI from the button on the top bar. You should now see the Uniqlo GUI interface as shown here. This should be familiar from the previous video. The first step is to connect to the correct COM port where your Nucleo is connected. Once that is done, you can press start to begin reading data off the serial. You can confirm that this is working by using the live log in the user messages to view the quaternos being calculated in real time by the ISPU. Finally, you can click on the sensor fusion button on the left side of the Uniqlo GUI to bring up a visual model of the sensor fusion output, which you then can move by moving the hardware in real time and see the results. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. Don't be afraid to play around more with the tools shown in this video and make your own Algo Builder project with the ISPU.